with us to now on the Oakland County Mega Cast is Tracy Pokovnik. I knew I was Prokubnik. I knew I was going to get that wrong. I did. Pr- I did practice earlier. Uh, Edelstein. She's the director of residential marketing and community relations over at the Jewish Senior Life. Thank you for being with us here on the Oakland County Mega Cast. Thanks for having me today. How has this been for the Junior Ju- Jewish Senior Life during the pandemic? And there have been so many changes to the health orders. How do you keep up with all of them? We are, um, you know, day to day. We have um, staff members totally dedicated to following the orders and all the directives from the state, from the government, from the Department of Health and Human Services, so that we are um, updating our residents and their families daily, sometimes hourly. Um, to make sure we are adhering to all of the guidelines. Uh, We are taking care of over 800 older adults on two campuses in independent living, assisted living, and memory care. We do not have a nursing home, which is considered a long-term care um, or skilled nursing, but we we do um, offer the other three levels of care. um, And so we are caring for many vulnerable older adults here. I worry so much about the seniors when it comes to that feeling of isolation. Are you allowed to um, let visitors back into the facilities right now? So um, all along, essential visitors were permitted, of course, with the proper screening tools in place. Um, As of um, just a few days ago, um, non-essential visitors are permitted in with um, also adhering to strict guidelines and um, limitations. Um, And prior to that, we had outdoor visits and window visits. So. we are um, our families are just as concerned as we are and not wanting to expose their loved ones to any outside possible exposures they may have had so we're seeing that um uh, residents are are you know really remaining relying heavily on the technology phones and um computers such as we are on today that is such a new way of life for all of us. With some of your senior um, residents, how has it been for them to have to try to master this technology? They've really stepped up to the challenge, and I think that they've kind of defied the odds of, you know, you can't teach someone um, new things as we age. Um, myself included, I was quite concerned. I had never been on a Zoom or on Teams or I barely use FaceTime and I'm not in that age bracket yet. And um, seeing the residents um, really um, engage in this new technology for them and really um, embrace it. And it's a feeling of accomplishment um, for them as well. Uh, Tracy Prokovnik Edelstein with us. She is the Director of Residential Marketing and Community Relations at Jewish Senior Life. And Tracy, at this moment in time, We're seeing a spike in COVID-19 positive cases in the state of Michigan. How is that impacting how your clients are being able to be visited by family and by loved loved ones? And and how are you helping them to navigate that as we were in a place previously where we were starting to come out from under those restrictions because the state's COVID-19 positive levels were looking much better and now we're heading back into a direction where it's a little more bleak. Right, and, and it can be confusing, and that's why we have a dedicated um, staff team here just to um, um, learn about the new regulations as they change sometimes in the same day. Um, as, as you may have learned last week, um, they opened up um, in-person dining and more group, small group activities and senior communities, and then the next day we heard that, that the cases have gone up tremendously in our county. Um, so it's education. It's reminding our residents through letters, through something called Voice Friend, which is a voice messaging system that goes to them and their families, um, with reminders of how to stay safe. Um, you cannot restrict older adults from leaving the community. Uh, again, we're not a nursing home, so we don't fall under that umbrella. And so we're just reminding them that if they do choose to leave, that they are exposing themselves and perhaps other people to possible uh, risks and so with our older adult population, we know that um, based on the t- statistics we've seen, they are really in the most vulnerable groups. And so 
Um, I will tell you that our residents um, are telling us that they want to stay healthy, they want to remain safe, and they are they have adapted to this new way of living, which hopefully won't go on too much longer, but who knows, um, in a way that I can only um, just admire from afar because they are strong, they are resilient, and um, you know, they have, many of them have been through things like World War II, um, the Depression, um, things in their lives that have been uh, harder than this, but now they're older and some don't feel well. So it's that added layer of um, facing another challenge head on. Technology has definitely helped all of us survive this crisis and the pandemic. And it continues to change. And so we now have like Alexa and Google Assist. And they've taken it a step further where some of them now have cameras as well. So you can just directly communicate with one another. Are you allowing those type of devices within your facilities? Oh, we definitely are. Um, we, we also um, check on our residents every day. They get phone calls from us, um, from staff members. Again, we have a whole team of staff that just make assurance calls. We also have a lifeline button that all of our residents have uh, so that it, they will press it if there's an, an emergent need, um, as well as a door tag program so that in the morning at a certain time and at night at a certain time, the residents put out and take in almost like a hotel card that says do not disturb. It tells us that they're in for the night um, and that they've got awoken in the morning. So when we do our, what we call rounds, where we walk the halls, if, if a tag is on or off at the inappropriate time, we do another assurance check. So between that and the devices that you mentioned, um, we have residents who are doing crossword puzzles together, who are playing Mahjong virtually. Um, and when I say crossword puzzles together, I mean on the phone. Um, we, we are um, doing everything possible to keep that socialization going. And um, we have something called Touchtown, which is um, a television a system through the television where we can um, put on different shows and movies and some, some of the group activities that we were not able to do for such a long time, we're able to kind of pipe through each resident's apartment um, specifically. We even do exercise over the loudspeaker um, and I can do that for, in my office too while I'm listening. So we've all had to get creative during this time. What do you think has been one of the benefits coming out of this crisis and that you'll maybe continue post pandemic? Well, I, th I think we've really learned how to um, manage in a crisis differently um you know we've all thought we've been in crises in our lives um and i think this this has shown us that perhaps um this is the biggest one yet and that we can um come out on top on the other side and and be okay and and adapt and and be kind to each other and be more patient and i'll tell you we certainly have mastered a cleanliness and um sanitation uh, um sanitization I part perhaps excuse me sanitization and kind of all the things that um, increase safety and wellness um, with our residents yeah and the good thing is now you're able to find those supplies a little bit easier than back in the beginning because uh, things were pretty scarce uh, when the, all of this first broke out uh, and with that what what are you doing to help um, keep the virus out of your facilities and have you had any outbreaks and how have you managed to contain it? We have had minimal cases throughout COVID. Um, and um, if if we do identify that someone is positive, then we follow the, the quarantine um, self isolation programs and protocols mandated by the state. Of course, we report them to the state as well and do the contact tracing. Uh, we've kept it to a minimal one case here or there. You know, I think it's really unrealistic for for anyone to assume that it's not gonna happen in any type of communal setting when people are permitted to come and go. Um, again, the state, you know, we cannot restrict people from leaving. And so um, with those choices some make, um, again, it's increasing the risk, but we have not seen any type of spread. Um, and as of late, I don't know of any positive cases in our communities. That's great to hear. Let's knock on wood and make sure, you know, hope that yeah. it stays that way as well. Because right. when you hear about the, the new surge in the state of Michigan, I'm sure sometimes that can send a panic through you and your residents as well. Uh, today is election day. 
how has that been going um, for your residents? Have many of them been able to vote or do they go to the polls or did a lot of them, them take advantage of the absentee voting this year? Well, we're really fortunate here in West Bloomfield with our clerk, Debbie Binder. Um, prior to COVID in January and February, she came to the communities and educated our residents on how the different options to vote. Many chose the absentee ballot um, option. So the good news is that was already in process for many of our residents. And what we did um, over the last two weeks is we um, took our residents individually. We have um, uh, vehicles at Jewish Senior Life and we have um, uh, drivers here and they took residents one by one to the clerk's office both here in West Bloomfield and our and on our Oak Park campus to drop off their ballots um, and our residents felt really good about this um, they're civic minded they felt it was their civic duty and they also have their own um, opinions just like all the other generations as to who should be our next commander in chief. How has it been with all that you and your teammates are doing to try to keep your residents engaged and um, connected with one another? Are you concerned about isolation as this pandemic continues on? It's a great question because, you know, we know winter is coming and we know that's a typical isolated time for older adults in general and, and what we're we're telling people in particular people who are considering moving right now is that you know spending another winter in your home alone um is is likely to be more challenging than at least being in a communal setting because in a communal setting we have um check-in systems we have socialization options you know all of us in senior communities have figured out ways to make socialization happen at this point um if that's what a resident wants and we also um you know, we can do in-person dining right now. We can do small group activities right now. That could change tomorrow, um, but then it could change back. So we feel like, you know, we're still offering, able to offer more than we were six, even six months ago and um, have figured out different ways. We have um, uh, activity carts where we come around with crossword puzzles and books and movies and um, mind jogging games. So. You know, we, we just, we are doing everything possible for our residents to make sure that that they are going to get through this both socially and emotionally. And, you know, in thinking about that, I'm sure there are some families out there that have been considering putting their loved ones in a facility such as yours. It's one of the hardest decisions you have to make, yet maybe they've been holding off because of the COVID crisis. What do you want them to know? And when do you make that decision as to when you leave them, you know, let your loved ones stay at home or in their own home or when to put them in a residential facility? It really is the million dollar question and it's so difficult. You know, I talk to families daily about this challenge and what I, I often encourage them to do is to make sure that their loved one is a part of the conversation and that it's generally not going to happen overnight. So start with conversations about, you know, if they were to move, what would their choices be and, and really respect their wishes and, and don't push too hard because when you push hard, the, they're going to pull away uh, because as we get older and we lose control, over the things in our lives that we once could do very successfully, thriving, working, um, being healthy. You know, those things are changing in some way for our older adults and, and we need to make sure they have as much control as possible in these later years. Um, and, and, and kind of what I said before, I, I am you know, saying to people, you know, winter's coming. It's never fabulous in, in Michigan. Um, we don't have, um, you know, the, the, the warmest of winters around here. So being isolated in the winter and then isolated in the winter with COVID, um, you know, may want to think about moving to a community because communities in general, we really figure out how to stay clean, how to stay safe. We know what to do. We have protocols in place. Um, we're being monitored by the state. So we know, you know, we all know that we're in compliance and it really is the safest place to be right now. Yeah, sometimes, um you know, when you have an elderly person and maybe they've lived in their same home for 50, 60 years, trying to get them to move and to convince them to leave is so hard. So it's a lot of tough conversations for families to have. 
but at the end of the day, you want to do what is the safest route for your loved ones. So um, it's great that you have your facilities there to provide an option for those family members uh, that, you know, it is time for them to maybe, especially the ones that are living on their own still, it is time for them to make that decision to put them in a residential facility. So uh, thank you for what you and your teammates do over there. Quickly before I let you go, though, uh, we've heard so much about um, the lack of trying to getting enough employees to work at some of the residential facilities. How are you guys on employees and are you hiring at all? Um, that's a great question. We have been very minimally impacted by that. Um, one of the things we're really proud of Jewish Senior Life is we have staff in all departments that have been with us. 10, 15, 20 years from personal caregivers to maintenance departments to myself um, to executive level staff. So um, it's not something that we, um, wasn't one of our big challenges during this, this time, um, but hiring in general is a challenge because one of the services we offer is care and being a caregiver is the hardest job that um, um, I will, I will just say it, it is the hardest job I've ever seen. And um, uh, it's it's not easy because it's an it's a, it's easy to burn out and it's not the best um as far as um payment people you know are looking to be very competitive in the, in the market and so there are other places trying to um you know get staff as well so it, it can be a challenge we're fortunate right now it's not for us and i, I think it's a testament to how we treat our staff and how we feel uh, our staff feels like family part of the team here well, they are definitely, the healthcare workers are some of the heroes, not just in the middle of a pandemic, but outside of the crisis as well. But I think one thing this pandemic has helped to is to let the public really understand and realize just um, how important they are to um, our community and to keeping our loved ones safe. So thank you so much for being with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a pleasure.